Good morning. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction. And I will just introduce uh, how we can render custom maps for our own needs. So, as you maybe know already, uh, OpenStreetMap um, works this way. We have um, the editor. In this case, I use JOSM. Um, where I edit the data and put it into the database. Then this data goes into the database server, which is stored centrally. This is a central open street map database, hosted uh, primarily in Europe. Then we have um, the rendering server, the OSM tie renderer. In this case, I use Mapnik. There are also alternatives, but um, uh, in this case, I use Mapnik is the, the most flexible for my, for my needs. Then we have the web browser, which actually displays the map. So this one uses the Ajax framework to um, display uh, uh, custom map tiles, same like Google Maps does. So at OpenStreetMap, we have predefined tags, uh, which are globally used tags. Uh, worldwide, so those are general tags like highway tags, railway addresses, and so on. And then we can define our own tags, which we maybe need for a specific mapping purpose. Like I have a project for indigenous mapping, means um, I help the indigenous tribes here in Taiwan to create custom maps based on their own data for their own needs. If you want to render user-defined uh, user tags, then we need a, custom, a customized rendering server because the main rendering server, which is for the OpenStreetMap project, does not know about these tags and therefore will not display them. And since the data available in OSM is so huge, we actually need to filter the data for the ones we want to display. So for our customized maps, we need to control two instances of this flowchart. One, the editor, to actually input the data into the database, and then the tie renderer to render the actual map. I have set up a demo server for this purpose, uh, which actually runs here on my laptop. It's a virtual machine based on uh, Ubuntu 12.04 LTS and uh, uses the OpenStreetMap PPA on Launchpad. So this means uh, there are some, um, some packages available to help to set up the infrastructure. But um, to actually set up the infrastructure, to actually get a working MapNIC server, uh, there's still a lot of customization needs to be done. So what do we need for this? First, we need a working MapNIC installation. And uh, I don't explain here how to set this up. This is quite a, a huge task, and there are many tutorials on the web. So actually, if you want to set up your own server, um, search on the OpenStreetMap wiki. There's a lot of useful information. And uh, you may need to crawl through the pages and collect information from multiple sources. It took me actually quite some time to set this up. <laughs> It's not that easy. Then we need style sheets. Style sheets are XML files which describe which features we want to display on the map and in which situation. So in my case, I use the general OpenStreetMap style sheets and then customize them for my needs. If you want to display our own tags, like um, some items, some communities, or historical places, or whatever, which, is, uh, which does not have an icon already, um, then we need our own icons. So this is just a normal PNG file or SVG file uh, with 30 times 30 pixel size and transparent background. We may need our own fonts. In this case, um, I will give an example about rendering uh, Taiwan's highway shields, like you know, the, the, the shields for the freeway and for the, for the 
for the highways, which uh, announced the numbers, the freeway numbers. So they have different shapes and different colors here in Taiwan. So uh, it's not like in Europe where we use letters to identify those roads, but here we have to use the, uh, the icons. And uh, in my example, I use a blank icon, so it's just a template, and then use a font to actually paste the actual number on this template. So this is actually rendered on the fly. And then, of course, we need the actual data available in the database. So, of course, we need to make sure we have the data available first, and then we can render it. For the OSM style sheets on my Ubuntu machine, I just use this simple command. It's available in the OpenStreetMap PPA. And then there's a directory, etc. Mapnik OSM data, and this one has some subdirectories which we will use. Um, one is for symbols, is actually where the icons go in. One is include include directory. Uh, which I will explain later. And then we have the general OSM XML style sheet, which um, sources all these things together and um, is basically the, the master, master style sheet. For the icons we need, as I said, we just put them into, uh, this is actually wrong, this should be, dash and not a slash. Uh, Epic OSM data is one, one directory and then slash symbols. Uh, they can be in PNG or SVG format, must have transparent backgrounds, 30 times 30 size, and we can use smart file names for these images and then reference them in the OSM style sheet. So with smart file names, I mean uh, we can reference them in the style sheet with placeholders. For example, um, the width of the data, like the, the, the length, uh, the length of the data, how many bytes, how many characters the data actually have, we want to display, and then we can have different uh, images with different sizes to match those uh, different data cases. So in this case, uh, we would create an image like uh, for tertiary, tertiary rules, and the width maybe with three characters. So we would use tertiary and underscore three, and then we can use uh, a placeholder in the OSM style sheet to refer to this file. For the fonts, we need to actually make a new directory um, because by default, uh, Mapnik only searches in the EDC Mapnik OSM data directory, so we create a new subdirectory and just link the fonts from our main system into the directory. And only, of course, we need to use only those, those fonts which we actually need for our maps. And then we have in, in the include directory one file which is called font set settings. And here we have to specify a font set, for example, condensed fonts. This is something I create, um, which has the Deja Vu Sans condensed font in the set, which I use for my highway shields because I need some, some narrower uh, fonts for this. Okay? So there are also other font sets already defined like bold fonts and normal fonts and so on. So uh, we can actually adjust those fonts, but we need to link them into the font directory. We need, of course, the latest data. The data we can collect from a server. Uh, this server provides snapshots of the database for downloading. Um, you can download the whole planet file, which is very large. <laughs> and uh, in my case, I don't use this. I just use, uh, I cut out you know, like, like a box around Taiwan. So I just, I just download the Taiwan data for my use case. So this would be this link. And then we import it into the database, into our local database. We have to run a local PostgreSQL database 
on our server. So we can import the data. And there are possibilities to automatically update the data from the main server. But in my case, I did not set this up. Actually, I didn't get it to work yet. Still need some uh, fiddling. Um, maybe if I have some time, I can try to play with it. There are two options here. One is the load cache size, which actually depends on how large your data is. For Taiwan, it's enough to use a cache size of 3,500. Uh, for a planet size, you would need uh, 12,000 or more. And the dash K is enabled in HStore. HStore uh, means you have a set of fields predefined in your database, and the HStore stores all other fields which are not predefined. So you predefine your most custom used fields, and everything else goes into the HStore. Right? So you still have all the data available. You don't need to uh, omit any data, but um, the, data, the database will not be that huge. So the H store is actually like an array um, within the database, which has uh, a specific um, notation to use. After editing, we always need to restart the render daemon. Um, it would be useful to clean the tile cache if we are on a non-production system so that, uh, that we can see our changes faster. And we need to reload the website in the browser, means actually really reload it to clean the browser cache. Otherwise it has the old tiles in the cache and you won't see your changes. Now I have three examples. First one is to add Taiwan Highway Shields. Second is adjust the language of the map if you want to display the names into a different language. And third is to render custom tags. So for the Taiwan Highway Shields demonstration, we need Highway Shields as PNG or SVG, as I mentioned them. Um, Wikimedia has actually, actually lots of them available. So if they suit our needs, then we can just download them and resize them. Um, we may need graphics manipulation program like GIMP, Inkscape, Scribus, and so on to actually uh, play around with these size sheets and create templates. And we may need custom fonts, like if we really want to use the same fonts like the government uses for these shields, then we need to create our own font uh, and use font forge like this. So what do we need? We need one blank sheet of every type for this demonstration means one for the freeway shields, one for the expressways, one for the primary highways, and so on and so on. And resizing the shields if necessary, usually it is necessary. Target size 30 times 30 pixels, around 30 times 30 pixels, it does not need to be this, the exact same size all the time. Um, like sometimes we need to have a more wider shield uh, if we have some, some uh, like, countryside, street numbers, which do not fit in the regular shield. <clears throat> we can use a smart naming scheme, for example, if we have um, highway numbers which have a Chinese character in it, like, um, like, a, like the, the three ABC and so on, numbered highways with Chinese characters like Jia uh, Yiding and so on. Then we need to edit the OSM XML file. Uh, in this case, I just search for shield and modify the rules. Uh, okay, you can see this. So first I modify the filter. I filter for primary highway and the reference number is actually for this particular highway because maybe we have created a specific shield for this one. Um, we specify the zoom level, minimum, maximum, and then uh, we just modify the icon name in the symbols directory. The spacing and minimum distance actually specifies 
like how far apart the same shield would uh, display on the map. Like if you have a long stretch of road, you maybe need to display the shield multiple times. So actually, with these two values, you can define the how far from each other, so that they don't overlap. And I have a second rule, which is a generic rule for primary highway, and then use a template, which is primary.png. And then I use a font, for example, from the bold fonts, to actually print the reference number on this shield. demonstration effect. There it is. So now you can see here we have the highway shield, which is actually the template and then the number printed on it. Right? And if we zoom in, we have more and more available. In this example, I did not create the specific shields for these kind of highways. Um, if you want to look at more proper, then we probably need to create custom shields for those. But this is how it looks like then. Second example, localized names. So in some cases we want to create custom maps with uh, localized names in a different language. So for example, the default name tag in OSM has Chinese and English um, for Taiwan, but maybe I want to display another language. For example, I want to display an indigenous language, like Amis or Bunong or whatever. So we can, uh, actually copy the OSM file over, uh, create a new layer on the map. Uh, creating the new layer involves multiple steps because not enough time, so I cannot show it here. But basically, you just replace the select uh, command in the, in the data set and add, add like this one. So case, you just replace the, normally it's just name in the select field. You just replace this with case when tags. This one is, this actually is the, the, the reference to the H saw, right? So it's just like, a, oops, just like an, an array. So if tags, this one is not null, then it uses this tag, otherwise it uses the name tag, which has a general name, right? And that's basically the only modification you need to do. It's very easy. So, that's my browser, that's my browser. So for example, Let me go to Hualien. I recently went to Hualien to Shulin Township and taught the indigenous people there, which are Taroko tribe or Sidic, how to use OpenStreetMap for their own purpose. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, virtual machine, so it means slow. <laughs> so 
So this is basically the effort we made. Uh, you can see we have the Julian Elementary School with Chinese and English name, like the default tag. And when we switch to the Taoko subject make map, now it has a localized name in Taoko language. And the third example, uh, custom tags. So in some cases, we need to create custom tags, uh, for example, for indigenous boundaries. So this is the main purpose. I do this for the indigenous people. They want to create maps to actually uh, show the government where their traditional land is. So in this case, we need indigenous boundaries, which are not the same as the administrative boundaries. So we also have so we have a custom tag boundary equal to indigenous. Normally, this would be boundary equal to administrative. And the second tag admin level is the same like for the administrative boundaries. So how do I do this? Um, I go into the inclusive, in the including directory, and copy the layer admin, which is the administrative boundaries, to layer indigenous. Then I add this file into the layers XML file. The layers XML collects all the uh, layers. It's basically an index of this. So I need to add this file to tell it uh, I have a new um, inclusion file available. And then I need to edit this file and replace some values. For example, the color uh, to render, actually. Um, I need to replace boundary administrative with boundary indigenous. I need to replace the admin with indigenous in the data sets so that it doesn't conflict with the, with the administrative boundaries. And I need to change the layer and style names because they need to be unique. And then I need to edit the OSM XML and actually include uh, this file. Just add an include line for this. And then it's done. I currently don't have the data for this yet because this project has just started, so we don't have data yet. But it would display, in my example, um, let me show this. Come on, where is it? Okay, here's my server. So, so I specified that this uh, should be drawn with a green boundary instead of the purple not like normal. And then in the data sets, yeah, select way, admin level, and so on, where boundary is indigenous, and then group them as indigenous. Right? So that's it. That's basically all we have to do. And then the actual OSM file, which is actually a huge file full of styles. And then I search for indigenous. And here is the include line. It just includes the layer indigenous file. some useful resources for mapping in Taiwan. This is what we, what we usually use to look up all the tags we have available. And if there's anything which is not available yet, any custom tag you need, you can add them to the last one, this one. It's a wiki page, and we can use this for discussing new features. That's it so far. Thanks for your attention. Thanks a little for the sleep.
have any questions? Server, right? So, um, um, so to install a custom server, we need to download the data from an op from the or original OpenStreetMap site. Uh, so, how often should we update our uh, our map data? And after updating the uh, the, the, uh, the XML for for our layer, should we restart our server, or it just uh, or, or all, the up, uh, all the data will be updated on flight? If the server is properly set up and everything is working, then you can have, have actually minutely updates, live updates from the server. So uh, you, can, you, can, you can pull the data from the main OpenStreetMap server in fixed intervals and update your database on the fly. So this is possible, so you just need to download the full set once and then do the automatic updates. And um, the map, is actually called Slippy Maps. This is a collection of tiles, the same like Google Maps works. Um, these tiles are updated automatically um, if the data has changed, but it may take some time until you see the changes. And in some cases, you need to uh, clear your browser cache to get actually the new tiles. So you do not need to restart the server. It's just when you modify the style sheets, to, in, to uh, change the actual rendering behavior, you need to restart the render D daemon to make it known of the changes. That's it. Is it possible to uh, only apply the st style in a given area? Um, of course, you can filter by tags. Like if you look at the OSM, um, if you look at the OSM XML file here, we have style names and then you can filter so you can actually filter by specific tags like is in a specific area so you can filter by is in equal to whatever type of city or uh, anything so this is but this is defined by data in OpenStreetMap so uh, if you want to have like only a subset of a map you can Mm, create your own bounding box uh, to say and uh, make a custom style sheet for that bounding box but this would, would be a separate layer like um, I've shown like here so you, you will need to create this custom layer with your specific changes and then a small bounding box for this specific area you want to display Right, so it won't affect with a with a main map. Okay. Uh, 